So today's question deals with the difference between strength and facilitation. I know we've talked a lot about neuromuscular physiology and facilitation, so today let's look at what that actually looks like. So we've got our subject doing lunges with 40 pound dumbbells. He's going into his senior, uh, sophomore year of high school, 150 pounds. He just maxed out on squat yesterday at 325. So most people would say that's pretty good strength. Do you have any pain when you do that? No. Okay, so goblet squats, no strength. Couple of vertical jumps, he can jump, he can land, no pain, he's not falling all over the place, so it looks pretty good functionally. So, does that mean that he does not have any uh, neuromuscular inhibition? Let's take a look at objective measures and see what the difference between somebody who may look like they have normal strength, although they don't have normal facilitation. Okay, now that we know that our subject has normal gross strength, let's see what his facilitation looks like. So we're going to use a handheld dynamometer to measure foot-pounds of hip extension from the glute max. Uh, look in the notes below for the model number of this. Um, so what we're going to do is start him in a little bit of extension and have him push as hard as you can. Very good. And you can see that he's got 45.5 pounds of pressure. Switch it over here. Same thing here. Clear it out. And if we do this side, go ahead and push as hard as you can. Good, and relax. We can see that he only has 28.5. So the question is, why, if somebody has normal strength with squats, lunges, and hops, do they have decreased facilitation in one glute max versus the other? This is the difference between objective measures and just looking at somebody with a functional screen.